Joining me now is Queensland Opposition Leader David Crisofulli. David, I'm sure sometimes you wish you were on the moon uh, living up uh, under Stephen Miles there in Queensland. Um, he's admitted today that more needs to be done to fix the youth crime crisis that's plagued the state for years. I'm glad he's woken up. He's met with representatives from the Voice for Victims advocacy group. They've given him until January 19, 10 days, to respond in writing about how the government plans to address youth crime or they've threatened to hold more protests. They've described the meeting they had as being heated at times. You couldn't argue that Palaszczuk did a good job of handling youth crime. Will Stephen Miles be any different? Well, if he admits more needs to be done, great. We've got a solution on the table right now. Remove detention as a last resort. Unshackle the judiciary. Rewrite that Youth Justice Act and we're ready, mate. We'll, we'll go back to Parliament tomorrow if he's, if he's serious about it. You can say more needs to be done, but the solutions are on the table. We've been putting them on the table for three years. We've sat in lounge rooms with people who've had their lives torn apart. I've sat with people who have lost loved ones. The solutions are there. Rewrite the Youth Justice Act. Remove detention as a last resort. Get serious about early intervention. Fix the broken resi care system. They're all things that the government could do tomorrow, not just pay lip service. And right now, youth crime is ripping a hole through this state from one end to the other. And uh, it's a priority for me because it's a priority for Queenslanders. Well, victims are calling for a royal commission to be held into youth crime. Would you hold one if you won the state election this year? I'll tell you what I will do, and that is on day one make it the first bit of legislation we deal with, and I'm not ruling anything in or out, and I've said that all along. I, I, I want victims to know that we're listening. I want Queenslanders to know we're serious about this, and we're going to do absolutely everything that it takes. Um, but I can promise you it'll be the first bill that we take to Parliament because we're serious about it. Uh, we'll move on. Stephen Miles again. Uh, he's saying he's, he's going to push ahead with this path to treaty program. Now, obviously, we know that the voice referendum was defeated quite resoundingly in Queensland. The, the no vote was very strong. You changed the opposition's policy on this last year. There was um, initial soft support for treaty that, uh, that you reversed, and rightly so. Why can Miles not see, given the result of the voice, that this is potentially electoral poison? Queenslanders spoke and I listened and um, the government's not listening. And so they can embark on whatever process they want. Uh, I've been upfront and clear that that uh, referendum, the way that I saw it unfold, the Prime Minister did not listen to the warning bells. He was told repeatedly that it would divide the nation. He was told repeatedly it wouldn't deliver what he said it was going to deliver and he didn't listen. Now, I'm not like Prime Minister Albanese. I do listen, and Queenslanders spoke overwhelmingly. Now, my focus is going to be on making sure that we can get people into a job, getting a house, get, doing something about youth crime. That's going to be my focus, and I intend to make sure that every Queenslander, including those Indigenous communities that I've been to, I've been to all of them. I was in one just the other day in Woodrow Woodrow looking at the devastation uh, following Cyclone Jasper and the flooding that came from that. So I'm serious about it. Uh, but if the government wants to be pig-headed, if they want to continue down this path... Queenslanders will speak again. Uh, but I am telling Queenslanders, I have heard the message and it's not on the agenda and our focus is going to be on outcomes, which is what I've always wanted from this. I've always wanted a focus to be on the, uh, on the absolute dire shortage of education, employment, mm. home ownership. That's important to me. Yeah, and you can spend all that money on treaty and all these other things and achieve nothing uh, makes us feel warm and fuzzy, a bit like talking about Australia Day. But um, if you're not doing anything practical, there's, there's really no point. Now, last night we spoke to a Brisbane nurse who's been sacked from her job uh, because she refused to get the COVID jab two years ago. Now, the state government lifted the vaccine mandate and they have still sacked her. Take a listen.
There's no sensible reason why they would continue with this action. We know that our hospitals are screaming out for staff. We're seeing um, ambulances ramped outside, people dying in ambulances. Our rural areas are really suffering, um, but they, they just continue and they will not engage on this issue. They, um, I, I don't know why they bothered to drop the mandate if they were going to continue firing people. I'm mm. one of at least 50 since September 25. Given the health crisis that Queensland is in, you've got critical staff shortages. What possible reason could there be to sack a nurse after the vaccine mandate has been lifted? Well, well nurses are leaving in droves from Queensland Health. Uh, they feel battered, broken and bruised. And here's one who wants to go to work and she can't. Now, I stood up the other day with the Shadow Health Minister, Ros Bates, and we said to the Minister, well, hang on, the requirements were lifted. Uh, you said that really clearly. Clearly, that doesn't apply to this person. Now, we've repeatedly asked that question and we haven't got an answer. So we're going to keep asking that question on behalf of her and everybody else. Uh, rules are there and you've got to apply rules fairly. And uh, the Minister hasn't answered that question and we're going to keep pursuing it. As well you should. Now, as we mentioned earlier, obviously we're in uh, an election year for you up in Queensland now. And the Prime Minister's thrown his support, unsurprisingly, I suppose, between behind, sorry, Stephen Miles. He's called him a Labor hero who's going to win the election. <laughs> Take a listen to this. Look, uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk was a very good Premier of Queensland. She's a friend of mine. She won three elections in a row. She's a Labor hero. This bloke here is going to be a Labor hero when he wins the next election uh, held later this year. He's got to be the most awkward Labor hero I've ever seen, David. I'll tell you what, Caleb, uh, I don't agree with everything that Prime Minister Albanese says, um, but I don't disagree with everything he says either. And he said uh, a little while ago, governments don't get better in their fourth term. I reckon he was on the money when he said that. <laughs> Very good. Touche. Um, and before you go, there was some commentary in the Courier Mail today suggesting that if you promise to ditch the Olympics it'll guarantee you as the state's next Premier. There was a survey a few days ago that said 66% of people don't support the Brisbane Olympics. 74% said they wouldn't attend a sporting event during the Games. Seems to be becoming a bit more obvious that perhaps Queensland can't afford this. Is this something you would consider? Well, I can tell you why there's frustration, Caleb, and that is it's been over 900 days since we were awarded the Games. And 900 days ago, we were promised that this was going to be a generational opportunity, that all levels of government would come together and the focus would be on infrastructure. In the last 900 days, all we've heard the government talk about is a sporting stadium and a big party for the rich and the famous and who gets the best tickets. Now, that's not my priority and that's not what Queenslanders want. Now, Queenslanders will pull behind the event but it's got to be about generational infrastructure. It's got to be about building road and rail. It's got to be about a 20-year tourism strategy to make sure we develop new product and then have the eyes of the world on us and promote our great state. It's got to be about improving communications, a housing strategy. We've heard none of that from the government, absolutely none. And that's why there's a level of resentment from the community. Uh, but I want to unite the state. And I want Queenslanders to know that my view is not like the government. I don't want to be a control freak and take everything in. I want to have an independent infrastructure delivery authority and my focus won't be on stadiums. It'll be on generational infrastructure so every single part of this state can be better for the next generation. And fair enough. I mean, look, we already lost the Commonwealth Games in Victoria. Imagine if we lost the uh, Olympic Games in Queensland as well. Goodness me. David Christofoli, thank you so much for your time.